Hey guys, so today I'm going to be doing my first sort of eating disorder slash mental health book review. And so the book, I, I've been reading this for a while. I think I started reading it in seventh grade. So I started reading it before treatment. So I don't think, I don't really recommend reading any eating disorder books like while you're in your eating disorder because I think a lot of eating disorder books like share specific behaviors and I don't think that's really good for people who are like still in their eating disorder. It might not even be good for people who are in recovery or in treatment. So I think just like make sure you are in a really good place where you're not tempted by any eating disorder behaviors or anything like that. So the book I read is called Purge. Now it is by Sarah Darer Littman. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. And it's kind of like a diary. It's a journal that she is given while she's in treatment. So when she's writing in her journal, it's more about how her eating disorder came to be. And when it's in real life, it's kind of just sharing her treatment experience. So for this book, I'm just gonna give out a quick trigger warning because of course, like I said in the beginning, a lot of eating disorder books have certain behaviors in them. And it just talks a lot about you know, the consequences of eating disorders, and I think it can send a good message, but I think they can definitely be really triggering to people. Jeannie Ryman hates throwing up, so why does she binge eat and then stick her fingers down her throat several times a day? That's what the doctors and psychiatrists at Golden Slopes hope to help her discover. But first, Janie must survive everyday conflicts between the barfers and the starvers. Attempts by the head psychiatrist to fish painful memories out of her emotional waters and shifts in friendships and alliances among the kids in the ward. In order to get better, Janie must talk about things she's admitted to no one, not even herself. Laced with danger, insight, and humor, Purge is one girl's remarkable and daring journey to make herself well again. So as you can tell by the description, this is about a girl with bulimia and she does not have any anorexic traits. Now the first thing I'm gonna be going through is the things that were in the book that were not realistic. And I'm gonna kind of give you like a spoiler alert right here because it does list like certain things, but I didn't like give away the ending or anything. So the things that are not realistic is on their ward, they are placed with adults. So it's children and adults and they eat with adults and stuff like that. And I just, um, I think just for legal issues, that's not really realistic. We didn't do it at my treatment center. I think I've heard of one treatment center doing it, but um, I think at a lot of treatment centers, the adults and the children are separated. So also in the book, they all eat meals together, but it doesn't really mention anything about like them all having different meal plans, which is what actual treatment would be like because some people need to gain weight and some people just need to get their nutrition level up. So it's kind of confusing for me because they don't mention dietitians, they don't mention consequences if you don't eat your food. They do have supplements, but it seems to me like it talked about a lot of the starvers, which first of all, I don't think starvers and barfers is very, it's, it's not very nice, <laughs> but I just, that's just my opinion. I don't think that's the best way to describe it, but I mean, whatever. So they say, the staff say that, you know, you have to eat the food or you have to drink the supplement, but they don't really talk about what happens when you don't drink the supplement. I don't know, maybe they just don't do anything, but normally in treatment centers, they would enforce feeding tubes or they send you to the hospital. Another thing, I've heard of other treatment centers doing this, but just specifically from my experience, I did not experience this, they would let you sit back at the table until you finished the meal. Now at my treatment center, and I've heard um, a lot of other treatment centers, you have like a timed schedule. So for example, at my treatment center, we had half an hour for snacks, half an hour for breakfast, and 45 minutes for meals. And if you didn't finish it, it was a time refusal. So it wasn't as bad as an actual refusal where you just didn't eat at all, but it was just like you were trying to eat and you were eating and then the time ran up. So that would be a time refusal. But I have heard of other treatment centers doing that. It's just, for my experience, I just don't, I haven't experienced that before. Another unrealistic thing for my experience is after Janie gets discharged from her treatment center, she's very recovery focused. She doesn't have very bad body image. And I just think she was in treatment. 
she was really depressed and having really bad urges to purge all the time and she was just not good with dealing with her anxiety and her emotions and then it just goes from that to her being discharged and her having no body image issues and her being really recovery focused and just like ready to take on the world and I just think it's a really fast shift and I don't think that's very realistic. So just the consequences of that is it kind of makes it look like eating disorders are easy to recover from and they're definitely not. So another thing is no one starts till they're at the table. So meaning lunch could be planned for 12 o'clock and they might not start till 12.30 because the starvers are hiding. Because the starvers are hiding, they won't get to start till a later time. And in my treatment center, it was everyone goes at once. If you don't go, you're left behind and you get a refusal. So it's kind of, it's just kind of confusing to me. I don't think that's a very good system especially since it's like holding everyone else back. So another strange thing for me is they list all of the things you have to do before you get discharged, like make a therapist appointment and a psychiatrist appointment, but they don't mention like meeting with a dietitian and you don't leave with a meal plan. So like I said before, everyone kind of has the same meal plan. So it doesn't really cater to your specific needs, which I don't think is very helpful. So another thing about it is some of the characters in Purge hurt themselves, like self-harm, and there aren't really any consequences. I know at my treatment center, if you engaged in self-harm behaviors, you would be put on safety precautions where you would sleep outside in the hallway and you weren't allowed to have any razors or sharps or anything. So it just didn't seem like that would be a really effective method, just like telling them not to do it. I don't think that would work out very well, and then I don't think that that would be you know, the most safe environment for them. The last unrealistic thing is I would say just how they caught them, the barfers and the starvers, kind of putting everyone in their illness. So if you're either anorexic or you're bulimic, there's no in between. You know, it just, it didn't show a very diverse showcase of eating disorders. It was just anorexia and bulimia which is unfortunately kind of the stereotypical, you know, when you think of an eating disorder, you're like, oh, she throws up after she eats, or oh, she just doesn't eat anything. So there are a lot less um, realistic things than unrealistic things, but some of the realistic things is there is a character who has to leave the unit because she gets very sick from her anorexia, and she does end up dying. And I think that really affects Janie and it really makes her think like, wow, what I'm doing is deadly. So I think that's one realistic thing because definitely, you know, eating disorders are have the highest mortality rate of any psychiatric illness. So I think that part was pretty realistic. We see a lot of movies about eating disorders like Hunger Point and The Best Little Girl in the World just like everyone with an eating disorder is really underweight and that's not really the case. You can be really unhealthy from your eating disorder and still technically be at a healthy weight. So I think the book did a good job of portraying that because there are um, some you know, overweight people and then there are some people who are just at a healthy weight and then there are some people that are underweight. And I think that portrays the eating disorder spectrum really well. Okay, so I like this book because it is about a girl with bulimia and most books and movies that I've seen just mostly focuses on anorexia. Just because I think the media portrays anorexia as the most dramatic and life-threatening eating disorder so you know more people are going to watch the movie, more people are going to read the book. So I just liked that it was a different eating disorder besides anorexia. So one thing I didn't like about the book is Janie does not really explore into her past about why she has her eating disorder. She kind of just talks about current events and kind of blames everything on what's going on in her life. And it kind of just gives off that vibe that, you know, eating disorders are kind of just a phase and it's just like a current thing. It's not like deeply rooted from your past and I think that's incorrect because a lot of eating disorders, you know, kind of start to blossom when you're younger, but it, you don't really realize it. 
so she doesn't really talk about like what her life was when she was like a kid and stuff it's mostly just like the past like two-ish years so overall this book was not very realistic um it did have some good parts but i definitely think that you know maybe the author could have like put some more realisticness I don't know if that's a word, but made it could have made the book more realistic and kind of easier to relate to. I just feel like a lot of the stuff in here are stereotypes, especially calling people like barfers and starvers. And it also kind of portrays that you can only be unhealthy from an eating disorder if you are anorexic, which is definitely not true. Just keep an open mind that some things in the book might be triggering to people. So you might want to read it when you know you're at a stable place in your recovery. Okay guys, that is all for today's video. I hope you guys have a great day. Thank you for watching. As always, you guys can subscribe to my channel and I will be making more videos. And if you have any suggestions for videos, I need a ton. <laughs> Just leave them in the comments below. Okay, bye guys.